Good morning, and welcome to the Boulder Valley Unitarian Universalist Fellowship and our Zoom outdoor service combo. I'm the intern minister here, Lisa Moore, and I'm joined today by our service associate, Paul Gibb, our music director, Tad Coriath is here over on piano, and Amy Austin is leading songs. Where's Amy? There's Amy. And our AV tech team, Eric Williams and Mary Stackpole, who is working from home, so you can't see her right over there. Deborah Mensch and Karen Griglack. So thank you. And the wind. The wind is here to help us today, too. Here we are again. We've got another pivoted in services. We've been pivoting. We've been adapting. And in, in, in time, we, the, we are going in the direction of gathering together and in person and inside. Yay! Last week, congregational leadership and Reverend Lydia responded to the cha changes in uh, the Boulder County's COVID risk status from high to very high by adopting UUA guidelines to suspend all in-person per gatherings indoors and out. Actually, it was a couple weeks ago, but I know they do meet regularly. Um, Based on science, though, we do take and uh, taking into our values of inclusion. We feel comfortable with the risks of multi-way age worship, masked, and with no congregational singing are, are minimal outside. So here we are. This one we hope we'll be able to stick with for as long as the weather holds, or as long as Boulder County doesn't slip into the severe risk status on the COVID Act Now protocol. We continue to test our CO2 levels in the building so we know how many people can return sa indoors safely based on the science. So fingers crossed, we'll be able to keep meeting in this multi-platform way for the foreseeable future. We have a reservations team and they would like me to remind you that if you are requesting seats to attend in person for any of the November services, because that's when we're planning on actually being in our new beautiful sanctuary instead of outside of it, that the form is due by the end of the day tomorrow, October 25th. Please see the chat for the link to the form if you haven't filled it out yet. And I'll have a little bit more detail on this during the announcements after the service. And Deborah, how many? We've got 51 people in, in the Zoomiverse watching, so yay, thank you. And about how many? 23, 25, we'll say 25, we'll round it up. Ooh, this moves. Um, here with us today in person. Thank you. Thank you for being here on this brisk, chilly, and sunny day. And we have, I saw a couple people on the playground. Um, and we're managing to be together once again. If you here are here, and you get too chilly or too hot, you can also head to your car and tune your FM radio to 97.5. And you may turn up the volume to hear the signal. And I do think we do have those posted somewhere, maybe not. Um, but it is 97.5 FM on your dial if you wanted to go in the car and listen, if the wind gets too much or what, for whatever reason. And if you are joining us by Zoom today, I invite you to shift into gallery mode if you haven't already done so, and scroll through the screens so you can experience the lovely diversity of this congregation, because without it and without you, there would be no us. Those of you in person today, take a moment and look around at each other, maybe even smile and wave. Hi, hello, hi baby. And now I'll bring us a little bit closer in with our opening words. You are all welcome here today. In all the beauty of languages, cultures, skin tones, shapes and sizes that come together in your uniqueness, you are welcome here. In all the ways you experience and express gender, you are welcome here. And the beauty that is who you love and how you love. You are welcome here. Whether you are joining us on Zoom, in an old jalopy, 
the latest electric vehicle, or in hopefully very comfy outdoor chair. You are welcome here. Christian, pagan, humanist, Jew, Buddhist, mystic, Unitarian, Universalist, still trying to figure it all out with all the traditions that inform your spiritual life. You are welcome here today. No matter how long you are away, nor how soon you will return, you are welcome here. Whether you come with laughter in your heart or tears, you are welcome here. You are invited to join us with an open mind, a loving heart, and willing hands. We welcome you here today. As you use, we acknowledge our community is located on the lands once stewarded by the Arapaho, Ute, Lakota, and Cheyenne peoples. This congregation honors indigenous legacy and respects the enduring relationship that exists between indigenous peoples and their traditional homelands through our connections to right relationship Boulder. We also acknowledge that we live in a time when black, indigenous, and other people of color and Hispanic people are devalued, violated, and killed because of systemic racism. Boulder Valley commits itself to becoming anti-racist and defeats and defeating systemic racism by taking actions to dismantle racism in society, taking guidance from and while honoring the lived experiences of those who identify as people of color and developing personal relationships between cultures. If you're new here, we are glad you found us. And we hope that no matter where you are right now, in person, in the Zoom reverse, that you can experience the warmth and love of this congregation. Each Sunday is a little different here, so please come back a few times to really get to know us. And if you want to get a little bit better connected, please visit our website at bvuuf.org. If you are on Zoom, you can see in the chat window the, um, some postings for some um, connections for the link to our first time visitors page. You can also email your information to our office manager, Carol, at officemanager at bvuuf.org. And her email will be in the chat as window as well. Finally, if any new visitors on Zoom would like to introduce yourself in the chat, please do. And if there are any newcomers here in person who would like to inter introduce yourselves now, please just raise your hand or stand up and do so, or wave, or... Hi, oh, welcome. welcome, yay. Thank you, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad everybody's here. We love knowing who's among us. Following the service, we'll have some more announcements uh, some virtual coffee hour in the Zoom, hang out here, chat, um, and socialize. If you are joining us via Zoom, I invite you now to light your chalice as Paul lights the fellowship chalice. So we know where the chalices are on Zoom. Please write in the chat, chalice lit in, and the name of your town. We light this chalice for the warmth of love, the light of truth, and the energy of action. I could feel the vibration of you all saying that at the same time in my heart, and it was amazing. Thank you. Now, I invite you to let the sound of the second, ball, second bowl draw you deeper into this present moment and the company of this multi-generational, multi-platform, gathered community. Center with it, I'm gonna give it a nice hard strike and center and listen to the resonance and try to feel that and the connection between everybody.
Good morning. This is a poem by Fred Lamont, who was a non-denominational minister who has delivered this and other writings at numerous UU congregations. He responded to me when I emailed him that he would be extremely happy to have this poem read at our service. My ancestry DNA came, results came in, just as I suspected. My great-grandfather was a monarch butterfly. <laughs> Much of who I am is still wriggling under a stone. I am part larva, part hummingbird too. There is dinosaur tar in my bone marrow. My golden hair sprang out of a meadow in Palestine. Genghis Khan is my fourth cousin, but I didn't get his dimples. My loins are loaded with banyan seeds from Sri Lanka, but I descended from Ravenna, not Ram. My uncle is a mastodon. There are traces of white people in my saliva. 3.7 billion years ago, I swirled in golden dust, dreaming of a planet overgrown with lingams and yonis. More recently, say 60,000 BC, I walked on hairy paws across a land bridge joining Sweden to Botswana. I am the bastard of the sun and moon. I can no longer hide my heritage of raindrops and cougar scat. I am made of your grandmother's tears. Admit it, you have wings, vast and golden, like mine, like mine. You have sweat, black and salty, like mine, like mine. You have secrets silently singing in your blood, like mine, like mine. Don't pretend that the earth is not one family. Don't pretend we never hung from the same branch. Don't pretend we don't ripen on each other's breath. Don't pretend we didn't come here to forgive. And that's the end of the poem. I'd like to add, may we know we are all cousins related, living our lives on the same, not always so perfect planet. May we greet them all with kindness and with love. Our first hymn today is 1052 in the Teal Hymnal for those of you who are at home. And those of you who are here, you're invited to listen, to meditate, to sing along uh, in your head uh, and enjoy this beautiful hymn by Jim Scott.
Like many of us, but I'm sure not all of us, I grew up in a culture that overpraised perfections of every kind and condemned imperfections of any kind. My parents never hugged me. And the only times they smiled at or even praised me were when I got straight A's on my report card. Now, a certain amount of perfection can be helpful as we go forward with our lives. But what happens when we become too frightened of our imperfections, of our everyday mistakes, frightened to the point that we are unable to trust that others will still like us? If we split that infinitive, or if we trip over our feet and use a four-letter swear word, what can this sort of perfectionism do to our relationships with other people? In the perfectionistic society in which I and so many others grew up, I lived in constant fear that someone I was in love with would, for example, smell my breath after I'd eaten onion soup and not had a chance to brush my teeth, and they would totally reject me. And so I never had a single close relationship until I was 24. I've largely gotten over those fears as far as relationships are concerned. But even today, when I'm driving my car, I still always have the feeling that the driver behind me is grading me. He's got a little grade book. He or she has a little grade book, uh, giving me an A or possibly an F for driving under or over the speed limit, that sort of thing. And on top of that, the perfectionism that remains in my personality today makes me not always a good carefully to what the other person is saying. I try hard not to do this as often as I once did, but there are still times when it happens and it causes me to fail to be a caring and sympathetic listener. How do those of us who are victims of such perfectionism extract ourselves from it? We need to help ourselves and each other to have the courage to be in situations where we might make mistakes and to find out whether others really do reject us for any of those mistakes. But an even bigger question is this. Just how much does the perfectionism that I and many of us experience keep us from having better relationships with others? How, how often might we hold back from befriending a bi or trans person for fear we might use the wrong pronoun? How often might we hold back from befriending a BIPOC person for fear we might say something that sounds even remotely racist or patronizing? And how does this kind of perfectionism that so many of us experience in one form or another, how does it affect our ability to, to be in relationship with people uh, with different experiences than ours people with different beliefs than ours, people with different needs than ours. And if we were beco to become a representative to the United Nations, for example, how would it affect our ability to relate to the diversity of other members' needs and opinions? May we know that, as the Fred Lamott poem reminds us, we are all related, we are all part of one huge family not just the family of humans, but the family of all beings. They are all our relatives. We are all connected. And we all live in the same world, a world that is both very wonderful and very imperfect. May we know that others can love us even when they see our mistakes and imperfections. May we know that they too make mistakes and have imperfections and that when we are not afraid to show our imperfect selves, seeing our lack of fear can help them accept their own imperfections. And if we can learn this lesson, maybe, just maybe, relations between all of us will begin to grow exponentially as our behavior comes more and more from the heart and less and less from the head. This month's Soul Matters theme is cultivating relationships. And today we celebrate United Nations Day. Today's service touches on both relationships and the UN.
Thank you, Paul. Perfectionism, I think, um, well, as Paul described, is really a form of uh, self-aggression. You know, either you're, you're not accepting parts of yourself or parts of other people that you uh, determine are not good enough, you decide are not good enough. So it really does inhibit personal relationships. You know, we're often reminded to show up with all of ourselves, to be with other people. But if there are parts of ourselves that we're not happy with, <laughs> how can we show up with all of ourselves? So this, this next uh, chant that Amy and I are going to, to sing for you is sort of a, it's intended to be a remedy for that sort of self-aggression. Um, this is, may I be filled with loving kindness and that's loving kindness not just towards the other person, but also towards yourself. Ultimately, first towards yourself, and then, and then towards everyone around you. 1031 in the Teal Hymnal, if you'd like to follow along. Thank you. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be well, may I be filled with loving kindness, may I be well, may I be peaceful and at ease, may I be May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be well. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be Thank you, Paul, for your wonderful reflection. And thank you, Tad and Emily, for your beautiful music. Why did the UUA decide to get involved with the United Nations anyway? Actually, the relationship started before there was a UUA or a United Nations. Before it was called United Nations, it was called the League of Nations, which kind of makes me think of the Justice League, but you know, that's my own stuff. Um, and the beginnings started around 1945 when the American Unitarian Association appointed Elvira Fradkin as an official delegate to the United Nations or League of Nations. In the 50s, the, the Universalist Church of America and the American Unitarian Association adopted resolutions in support of the United Nations. The founding of the Unitarian Universalist Association office at the United Nations, UU at UN, can be traced to April of 62. And right now I'm just kind of quoting some stuff. You can find all this on the UUA website. 
um, the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations and Unitarian Adlai Stevenson wrote to the UUA President uh, Dana McLean Greeley suggesting that each UU congregation nominate an envoy. And the quote, this quote is by Adlai Stevenson. Let me recommend to you the appointment of envoys in UU churches to promote better knowledge and understanding of the United Nations. In this disastrous and shrinking world, it is no longer possible, if it ever was, for local communities to be more secure than the surrounding world. I'm going to repeat that one. In this disastrous and shrinking world, it is no longer possible, if it ever was, for local communities to be more secure than the surrounding world. Our ultimate security, therefore, lies in making the world more and more into a community. All of you have the opportunity to share in that answer and thus help us build a peaceful world. That was in 62. Our relationship goes back, oh, I think I did actually did the math. It was about 76 years. I mean, so this has been something that's been going on for a bit. And it's a deep relationship. So then what happens? I mean, when there's a country that is treating certain parts or all of their population so horribly, how do other nations come together to fix that? How do you stay together? In a discussion with Reverend Lydia about the sermon today, she told me a quote about the messiness of communication. And we know the UN has had its share of messiness, just like Unitarian Universalism, and it still does. And I imagine most people have experienced it at some point in their lives. So why stay? It's messy, it's uncomfortable, these conversations, these relationships. For the UUA to maintain an office at the United Nations, it isn't just about putting a sign up and paying rent. United Nations has an accreditation process that an NGO, non-governmental entity, has to go through. And the Unitarian Universalist Association currently has three of these accreditations with the United Nations. I don't even want to think about the dedication involved maintaining three accreditations, just prepping for mine, for the, going in front of the MFC, sometimes makes me want to my head to explode. <laughs> three? Oh boy. So why does the Unitarian Universalist Association do this? I figure you all know the answer, but we're gonna say, I'm gonna say it anyway. It is one way, and it's a very, very big way to embody and share our principles with the world. Each day at the United Nations, the Unitarian Universalist Office Association Office at the United Nations strives to affirm and promote every person's human rights on the international stage. And that also, it also is a quote from, from the website. The UUA works to, at the UN to bring our principles into the world to uplift the inherent worth and dignity of everyone. Just as at the fellowship, it is part of multi-faith communities, just as the fellowship is part of multi-faith communities committed to social justice work in our neighborhood. UU at UN also promotes the interdependent web by being a part of the committees that focus on, envi on the environment in a much larger scale. My original idea for this reflection was to find some big picture idea that we could learn from 
the United Nations and the UUA and their partnership and what's going on and apply them to our lives here at the fellowship and in our everyday lives. Some big picture concepts of communication and being in relationship. But as I read and researched, I came to realize it is the skills and tools used at the UN, that the skills and tools used there are probably in some way very similar to the ones that we can, or maybe already are, using here. The difference in the words, the difference is in the words used to describe these skills. I imagine the big picture word used at the UN is diplomacy. A couple of years ago, I took a class at Chautauqua, New York, which is amazing. And that was probably, I will say on a side note, probably like my version of a paradise vacation because they had all sorts of things there. But one of the things that they had were lectures and speakers on various and different topics. And one of the ones that I got to listen to was a diplomat who at the time worked um, during uh, the Clinton administration. And she talked about um, Clinton going to Ireland to help resolve some, trying to resolve some issues between the Catholics and the Protestants at the time. And what she described, what diplomacy was, was active listening, learning about someone and putting our own needs aside for the bigger picture. So the day came and there was, you know, everything was on TV and Clinton looked great and everything looked great and happy, but there were months and months of work, of developing relationships and trust before we got to see the shiny 15 minute TV spot. Learning, creating bonds, Developing trust. Are you picking up a thread here? Yesterday at the leadership workshop that was led by Reverend Jen Simon and our much loved Victoria Gray, Victoria talked about using a skill called Dear Man Give Fast, which is actually an acronym and I don't have it quite in front of me so I'm not gonna repeat it, but you can check with Victoria hopefully. And this was this is a way that is used to engage dialogue with someone that helps take, it helps me take my emotions out of it for a little bit, still acknowledging them, but being able to be with somebody more presently in the conversation, no matter how uncomfortable it is. There are a lot of other skills like that, communication skills, being in messy conversations. Reverend Simon mentioned the um, messiness of the work of dismantling white supremacy culture and striving to become more and more anti-racist. It's not always easy. And I kept, when I was thinking of the quote that Reverend Liddy and I were talking about and not remembering the exact quote, the word muddiness came to me. And I thought about muddiness as a child and it's icky and gooey and squishy and kind of fun because you can make all sorts of things with it. And the muddiness of the relationships that we are trying to cultivate can also be icky and squishy. But as we work with them and play with them, sometimes we can create something really fabulous. There are other skills. In the book, Crucial Conversations, the authors describe what a cr crucial conversation is and then describe how to maneuver in that conversation for the best of all possible outcomes. Not winning, not getting my way at the expense of another, but the, but the best of possible outcomes. 
And then there's one of my favorites when trying to remember all the communication skills that I have learned in my years of therapy and seminary, but when I draw a blank. The one I sometimes revert to is I have two ears and one mouth. Do the math, Lisa. It is silly. And it also gives me a chance to slow down and listen actively and compassionately to the other person. Another skill is called STOP that I use. STOP is another acronym that means stop, take a breath. Oh, geez, am I breathing? Are you breathing? Take a breath. Observe what's coming up in me. What am I sensing around me? And then proceed mindfully back into the conversation. Now, my brain likes to turn almost anything into a song. So usually this one goes, stop in the name of love before I really screw up. Think it over. Whether among nations, within our various communities, or between two old and dear friends, our communication, not just our words, but the dialogue, the silence in between, and the mindful listening. These can take on aspects of sacredness if we put our spiritual intent into it. So let us go forth and think about the conversations that we will be having and think of them as a spiritual practice. Ooh. Um, in the offering, the chat is going to be, and we'll say it again, but what's your icebreaker phrase that you like to ask somebody when you want to get to know them better? How do you engage that? What are your expectations? But what do you like to ask somebody? How do you want to get to know them better? Can this question be part of your spiritual practices? Amen, Ashe, and blessed be. Each week, we remind ourselves of the abundance of our lives and this community by giving half of our plate away to those organizations that share our values. This week, we are sharing our plate with Together Colorado. Together Colorado is a multiracial, faith-based, anti-racist organization that organizes for a better world for our children and our children's children. Together Colorado is now collecting stories of families in Boulder County and problems they may have had getting mental health access and or affordable housing. They are now working with the county to figure out how best to spend 63 million from the American Relief Fund. If any of you are interested in finding out more, please email or click on chat to contact Rosemary Arp or Kathy Partridge. Is he, either of you here today? Uh, there you are, Rosemary. Okay. <laughs> Please give generously. This is an organization that very much supports our values. If you are on Zoom this morning, the text to donate number will be on your screen. If you are in person, look for our hospitality folks moving among you with the text to donate number. There are also offering plates up front. 
Over there. Oh, over there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like to make a cash donation. As our musical reflection begins, we invite you to reflect upon what question you would like to ask someone when you want to learn more about them. for the work of this fellowship and also to Together Colorado, bringing love, reason, compassion, and justice to this world and to the Convoy of Hope, we dedicate and bless our offerings. I was waiting for the end, now we sing music. I'm kind of getting in a habit of that one. <laughs> but now I will invite us into our time of community connection, our time of sacred sharing. If you are on Zoom and you'd like to share a joy or concern, please type it into the chat window, sending it to everyone. And let us know briefly what is in your heart today. I've got my phone. I've got it up to the chat, so I'll be able to read aloud what you share. If you are here and would like, and also on Zoom, if you would like us to be able to follow up with you, please include your full name and where you live in your chat so we can reach out to you. Paul will put a stone in our sacred waters on your behalf. If you are here in person, please come forward and share your, what is on your heart today. Blessed ones, the weave and weft of the joys and sorrows, our concerns, our hopes and dreams, combine together to make a tapestry that we all engage in. Those on Zoom engage and wrap and weave their stories along with those of us in person.
We acknowledge the passings of life in this tapestry. We acknowledge birthdays, achievements, concerns. We share in the joy and struggle to make the tapestry richer and thicker and more durable. May we cont continue to weave together what is in our hearts and create more beloved and strong bonds within this community and within the world. Amen and blessed be. Our last hymn today is in the gray hymnal number 318, We Would Be One. thing off again. The words for our benediction today come from Mark L. Bellatini. Go in peace. Live simply, gently, at home in yourselves. Act justly. Speak justly. Remember the depth of your own compassion. Forget not your power in the days of your powerlessness. Do not desire to be wealthier than your peers and stint not your hand of charity. Practice forbearance. Speak the truth or speak not. Take care of yourselves as bodies for you are a good gift. Crave peace for all people in the world, beginning with yourselves. And as you go with the dream of that peace alive in your heart. We extinguish this chalice, but not the warmth of love, the light of truth, nor the energy of action. These we carry in our hearts until we meet again. Amen. Blessed be. And now, the fun part, announcements. Promise those. These are for announcements for our upcoming events, followed by our virtual coffee hour in the, for those on Zoom. There are still two Thursday evening Zoom classes in Rever Reverend Lydia's adult offering, A Call to Faith in Turbulent Times. For those of you on Zoom, the information is going into the chat. And for those of you at here, here at the ship today, you can find the information in Connections Weekly. 
Are there any children, or <laughs> any children? Yes, there are. Saturday, October 30th is from two to four is a pumpkin carving party. Woo! BYOP, bring your own pumpkin. Carving supplies, if you have them, we'll also have some carving tools and design templates on hand to share. The November 7th after the service from 11.30 to two, um, lunch provided, SOS book organization party. So School of Spirit needs to organize some books. So please come and help our staff get all our books organized and our classrooms one step closer to being ready for occupancy. RSVP to spirit teachers at bvuuf.org. Also calling all trained Our Whole Lives facilitators. If you are trained and willing to facilitate this year, please email Kitty Kaler at kitty at bvuuf.org. High school youth group is at UUCB today from 1230 to 2.30. Um, and clarify COVID for now. We are outside for one more week. Uh, the CO2 testing is ongoing to fine tune safety precautions and we expect to shift to indoors on Sunday, November 7th, unless a COVID shift to severe for Boulder County or there's technical issues or who knows what could happen, but we are really setting the energy that it's not gonna happen. Put that in your prayers too, please. Our service of remembrance is coming up on November 7th and we plan to have people present both in the building and on Zoom. More on in-person res reservations in just a moment. And in order to include remembrances for everyone, we will not be bringing in photos into the sanctuary. Instead, we are putting together a video to be inclusive of the roomies and the zoomies. Please send a picture and list who you are, who the picture is, um, and who they are to you for the slideshow. Please do not bring pictures or mementos to the actual service and make your submissions please by Wednesday, November 3rd, so we can finish in time. Make your submissions to Karen Griglack. Her email can be found in the Connections Weekly and is also going into the chat now, October 25th, to get your form in and have the same chances at seats as everyone else. Requests that come in ac after October 25th will be accommodated on a space available basis. The link for the form is going into the chat now. Indoor services will be streamed on Zoom for anyone not attending in person. If you, regular, regular, bleh, if you regularly receive Connections Weekly by email, you're on the right mailing list to get future messages about in-person services. If not, please go to the link now being pasted in the chat to get on the list. And you can also, I think, do that on the website at bv, bvuuf.org. Um, and if you know somebody who does not have technology and still wants to be part of the service, please reach out to them and let them know to contact us, call the office, so that we can also make space for those people as well. Um, and then I have one quick announcement, so don't cut me off yet. <laughs> I am currently in the process of beginning my, um, my intern project for this year, um, and it will be, um, some type of, uh, I'm just, I just drew a blank. <laughs> It'll be some type of covenant circle for those who self-identify as having mental health issues. Um, it is still in the early stages, but I just wanted to let people know if you have any questions or you think this might be something that you might be interested in, please email me at internminister at bvuuf.org so I can keep you in the loop on what's going on. And I will try to keep you in the loop, all of you, just so you know. Thank you. Have a blessed and full-spirited day. <laughs>